Alrighty then, so welcome to the first free lesson in the Scrapebox Elite training series. Now I'm going to give you a quick overview to how Scrapebox actually works, or well, the main function works, and then I'm going to take you through how we install proxies, which is really the first step and probably the most important step of Scrapebox. Now, down here in the bottom left hand corner, we have our proxies, then we have our keywords, then we have our harvesting URLs, and then we have our comment posting. And this is the essential order in which Scrapebox will function. You'll first go and you'll find proxies. Then you'll scrape keywords out of Google and other search engines. And then you will use those keywords and those proxies to harvest blogs of a particular type. For example, WordPress blogs. You can then filter those blogs through a list of options on the right hand side. For example, you could filter with PageRank or you could remove, remove duplicate URLs, which is highly recommended, or you could check whether URLs are indexed. And lastly, you come down to your poster. You've got different versions of your poster and different text files with which you need to add in. Now we'll go through all these step by step. So today's lesson is to just to get proxies. Now proxies are very important because you need proxies to hide your IP address from Google. Essentially it keeps you anonymous and it helps you operate Scrapebox without getting banned or the website that you're posting getting banned from the search engines. So there are two types of proxies you can essentially use. Paid for, private proxies and free proxies. Now when starting with Scrapebox it's a good idea to just use free proxies for a while until you get your head around things before you consider um, paid proxies. And sometimes paid proxies might not be feasible for some people with just one small website that they're trying to rank. However, for individuals with a few websites that are profitable, then having paid for proxies is definitely the way to go. So Scrapebox has a function here where we have manage proxies. And we can actually find proxies that Scrapebox will basically find for us from a number of sources. We can load proxies in and we can save lists of proxies and then once we have our proxies we can delete. So the first way is probably to go and manage proxies. We can hit click harvest, pro harvest proxies and then select our sources. It's probably a good idea to use all sources. Then hit start and then what Scrapebox will do is it will go through all its sources and find as many proxies as possible. Now it's quick, completed quite quickly and it's found a few thousand proxies. Now what we need to do, which is the next and most important step, is to filter out all the dead proxies. So click OK, and we have a whole list of proxies here. We need to hit test proxies, and what this will do is it will show our good proxies down the bottom here, and our bad proxies over here. After we have completed this, we will hit save and transfer the good proxies to the main list. We don't want to be working out of bad proxies, and that's why we will, um, we will use Scrapebox to get rid of them. However, this is what Scrapebox gives, and I find that I, I'm, I'm at best will get 100 proxies out of their sources, um, and usually we'll only get about 40 to 50. So it's not the most valuable source. Ideally, when using free proxies, you'd like to have over 100. Now, in our resource section on the website, we've actually put in a list of three sources that we personally use when we're using free proxies that can give, I mean, on average, uh, between 100 and 400 proxies that are successful on any given day. And these websites are updated every single day. So the list is on the resource section of our website, so I encourage you to go there and check it out. But I've got them up here. These are the three websites. So if you want to um, copy these websites down, pause the video, and then copy the websites down as I go through the links. So I'll just go through one of these as an example. Ideally, what you'll do is you will open up a list of proxies here that I have saved next to Scrapebox outside, and you will paste in this um, the list here that they update every single day. So you can see the date he's updated to the 23rd of November. So what we'll do is we'll go through this list of proxies and we'll save the entire list. This is actually quite a big list today. So I'll stop it there and let's just say I save the whole list. I'll go into my proxies list and I'll add in a list of proxies for today. Then I'll save that list. I would do this for each of those websites. So I would go into the 23rd here, and the 23rd, and the 23rd. There's 68 proxies here, 12 proxies in here, and 249 in there. 
There's 693 in here, 1,229 in there, and 700. Oh, that was from yesterday, but that's probably still worthwhile checking out because they're one day old. So we'll go to our list here. We will load proxies from a source. We'll go to our desktop. We will find a our proxies. Where are we? We've got our proxy list here. And then we want to go back and we want to test our proxies. So after we hit test, Scrapebox will go through these lists and it'll start saying, okay, what's good and what's not good. Now I'm using yesterday's lists only with what I showed you was the only addition I made to the list. So I should probably come out with about 100, but you never know, I could come out with less than 50. So it really depends on um, how many of yesterday's proxies have been forced dead since then. So ideally, um, you'll update the entire list every single day. And it only takes about a minute, and I highly recommend it. So I'll just pause this video while the rest of the uh, testing occurs, and then we'll go from there at the end. Okay, so we're back here. Scrapebox is finished. We've found 151 good proxies and 169 bad proxies. So ideally what we can do is now we can transfer the good proxies to the main list and we have a list of working proxies. Now, what I did in the break was while that was scanning was I went and went back to the website and I put in the all the new proxies uh, that those websites had updated. So I actually copied them into that text file. So what I might do is I might load those proxies again and run it again and see how many um, good free proxies we can come up with here. So I want to test yes for the unresponsive proxies. And then I'll start from the top and I'll hit test. Now I've got 1,671 proxies in this list, so it should take some time to go through. But when done, I should end up with, I'm hoping, at least two, potentially even at least 300 good proxies. And remember, these are free proxies, so they're not the best of quality, but 300 of these is quite a valuable resource to have. Alrighty, we're back in action. Um, so as you can see down the bottom here, I've got 341 proxies that have actually passed, so that did surpass my expectations. And the bad proxies are there as well. We can see that this has taken 15 minutes to do. Um, I could even use harvesting proxies from Scrapebox sources to add more in, but to be honest with you, 341 proxies is more than enough. Um, you could do it, you could get up to 400 proxies doing this method. Not, not my personal thing, I don't really have a lot of time to do that kind of thing. Because I don't feel that uh, Scrapebox resources are um, as good, maybe because so many people are using them. So what we do now is we will go to save good proxies to the main list, 341 transferred over. And then ideally what we'll do here is go back to here, control all, delete, and then save this here as a blank file. And then we can save all our good proxies. And the reason we do that is so tomorrow, uh, what we can do is we can easily go and reload these proxies and take the ones that are good and add on the new proxies. So that um, can be very, very helpful. So looking here, we've got the whole list of good proxies there. And now we're ready to move on to the next step. Uh, that'll be lesson two. So this is actually really easy stuff. Once you know how to do this, so easy. We'll go on to lesson two next time. So that's lesson one. Make sure you go into our resource section and check out the resources. Uh, definitely the free proxies there. They are quite valuable. So I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and we'll tune in again, I'm sure. Thanks for listening.